Bonjour, bonjour, fragrance lovers. This is Clémence. I talk about Tom Ford. <laughs> Again, indeed, Tom Ford has released a new collection. Well, kind of. There was already one fragrance in Hello. there. The Private Rose Garden Collection. And they added three, not just one, three fragrance to the collection. They've been really busy out there. We don't have a clue who is the noise behind it, actually. Does someone know? Because I don't know. I went over there in Tom Ford with the idea to be disappointed again. Uh, Eben Fumé was a nice release, don't get me wrong, probably the, the best they've done those years. For me, I was not mind blown. It's a rose collection, so it's got nothing for me. It's really rare when I like a rose focused fragrances. So I was like, gosh. So I've been to Tom Ford uh, in uh, to try the fragrances on my skin and on a paper and also to get some samples to do my review. Uh, they didn't have samples which is really funny because I know that in this boutique I came a few times for private services and they always made me um, personalized uh, samples. I'm not gonna complain about that because I know I've been working in luxury. You can't give to everyone, of course, but at the same time, it's a new release. You should have a kind of a stock uh, of testers for people to try anyway. I've tried them all and I have to come back to try them again. So the first one I've tried is Rose d'Amalfi. It's basically the top notes are pink pepper, mandarin, bergamot, you have a heart in rose of course, and uh, the base is supposed to be almond and heliotrope. Are you expecting a little bit of a slightly gourmand fragrance, a rosy note, a little bit fresh at the start with the fruity note? Well, not really. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be probably the only one that's gonna say that, but when I smelled it the first time, so I was, it smelled like vodka. Wanna drink vodka too? Oh. <laughs> I was like, well, there's a weird smell in there. Like a very kind of icy cocktail smell, which disappeared after, but I smelled that at the start. Nearly, you know, like a bit plasticky as well. And I don't know. I don't really smell in the composition the, the bergamot. The bergamot is like very bright citrus. I don't smell anything bright citrus. I can smell the mandarin, you know, it's not very orangey a kind of feeling, but mandarin is always a bit more candied, uh, fruity note. So you, you can smell a bit of that, but it's not, it's not super fruity. Rose is of course very present. And at the start, I really can't smell uh, anything gourmand, anything almondish at all, personally. And then it's after a few hours on my skin that I could smell a bit more the almond and that's slightly uh, not sweet it's not sweet gourmand but it's not it's not very present with the time it's really something that is really powdery um, a bit girly um, young uh, fresh it's very light like a skin sense very delicate romantic i would see that on someone that doesn't really enjoy too much fragrance to be honest and and want something uh, that is discreet it's 178 for 50 milliliters which is lowest than uh, the usual private blend all of them they are light uh, scent uh, you know a bit tea like uh, so uh, i'm glad that they've put the price down for this However, 170 yen for Rose d'Amalfi, uh, no, no, like I, I wouldn't, no. Honestly, I wouldn't pay that for, for this. Don't get me wrong, it's really nice, uh, but it, it's nothing, nothing really creative. Like it's nothing, voila. This one is Rose de Chine. So um, top notes, peony, uh, Chinese peony, rose in the hot note and the trail is myrrh and labdanum the myrrh really gives something uh, not really resinous but more ambery uh, to the fragrance and labdanum uh, is that slightly leathery notes however not really overpowering which is nice You're a bit more stronger than rose d'amalfi for sure it's quite smoky and the peony is intoxicating so surprisingly it's not really focused on rose you can really smell this peony Peony, they're always a bit more vivid flowers, like really uh, full of joy uh, flowers, I'd say, and, and really give that rosy note. I'm talking about the color. Good projection, and I could smell it on my skin for quite a long time. It's not a sweet rose. It's got a really good balance between something fresh and a bit warm. It does smell like a modern chypre. Chypre is basically a composition that is made with top note as citrus, hot note uh, with uh, sister slap danum, and the base a bit mossy. 
uh, remove the moss and, and the rest is there. So I really enjoy it. I think it's a bit more complex composition. Uh, I think it's kind of sexy. Uh, it made me think of uh, that Geisha vibe, you know, the Geisha, they look super sophisticated and so beautiful, but you know, a bit naughty in the background technically. So would I pay the price for this? 100% yes. I actually love it. I had a real crush for this one. You do also have that slightly note of a tea, like a drinking a tea. It's divine. Honestly, this fragrance, it's really good. We have Rose de Russie. Uh, so uh, when I see Russie, I was thinking of uh, Russian leather directly. And of course, uh, it's focused on the leather. Top notes of white pepper. You have rose in the heart again. Woody note and leather note in, in the trail. This is the most opulent one, the most dramatic, the most intoxicated. Let's face it, it's pulsing. This is how I would smell a cuir de Russie from Chanel with a very girly note. I don't know, like the, it's a pink rose, you know, in there. So it makes me think of that. However, this one for me is ultra unisex. I'd love to smell it on a man. I think it would be uh, very charming. You really smell that dark leather in there. And this is really the main note. And, and the rose is more there to, to give something a little bit more romantic to all this darkness. Really. I think it was the price. It's personally not my stuff. Objectively, I would say it's as good as a rose de chine. And I think a really nice composition. Uh, for me, it's it's not really my stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of those kind of fragrances. So I, I wouldn't specifically wear it, but that's really personal point of view, hein, personally. So compared to Rose Brick, uh, Rose Brick, uh, which is a 240 uh, for 50 minutes, so much more expensive, and you can smell it. It's much more richer composition, richer rose, uh, absolutely intoxicating, uh, powdery uh, and stuff like that. Um, so you can really smell the difference of price and also because those three uh, ones are more like, um, for me, something lighter that means to be something more airy, uh, something that is nice for spring and nice for summer. It makes me think of tea essences. It's a nice collection, I have to say. Uh, I was scared the fragrance that had no original and stuff but it's a nice it's a nice collection oh pff, voilà i'm um do you know since loader bought the company i really see the difference um i'm not really on board that much anymore with tom ford i love the fragrance there's a lot of fragrance that i adore in tom ford 100 but it used to be a bit more decadent more mind-blowing like you would smell a tom ford and be like whoa what the hell this is sexy uh, you know you, you would smell something like that uh, killian took a bit this legacy i'd say this, these fragrances are made to to attract more people to the brand so i encourage you to try though it's a different approach as well a um, lighter concept i hope you enjoyed the video let me know in the comment if you've tried it uh, are you really um curious of what you think about those and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a little comment i like to discuss with you so that's it bye now